here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. Have you noticed since COVID, unfortunately, many believers acted like the world, fearful, angry, depressed. When they hear the bad news of the world, they side with the devil's words and not God's words. My guest knows why, and he knows how to stop it. Next. Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Welcome, Holy Spirit. You're our most important guest, and I'm so glad you're here. I can't wait for you, our audience, to hear how my guest, Rafael Giglio's Jewish grandfather, that happened to own four prominent West Palm Beach, Florida delis, came to the Lord, and then used his popular delis as Jewish evangelism centers. Then local Jewish groups protested. Raphael, tell me about, it must be your hero, your uh, grandfather. I adored and idolized my Jewish grandfather. He was the only grandfather I had. But he, later in life, was not so happy. He became very disenchanted with life, started drinking heavily. But at age 70, a neighbor, spoke to him about Messiah, led him to read Isaiah 53, and he gave his life to Messiah, and he became the most excited, joy-filled, spirit-filled person I've ever met. He was filled with joy, filled with power, proclaimed the good news of Messiah to all his friends and his family who disowned him. Um, but you know what? He had a joy inside him that I can only attribute to the power and joy of being filled with the Holy Spirit. He had, like you said, he owned these four Jewish delis. They had specialty items like latkes and matzo ball soup. Hey, you're getting me hungry watching. <laughs> but you know what? Everyone loved his food. His Jewish clientele was massive in, the, in Palm Beach County. But when he came to faith, he put on the wall a tract rack. You know what a tract rack is? Literature with Jewish evangelism tracts, including Messianic Vision tracts. And he was listening to Messianic Vision Radio with Sid Roth. He said, you know, Sid Roth told me I'm not just a Christian, I'm a completed Jew. <laughs> uh, he was so excited. And, and he would serve the food, but the Jewish clientele would come in and they would order the kasha and the latkes and the matzo ball soup, and they'd see the tracks on the wall, and he would say, I want to introduce you to my Messiah, Jesus. They would take the tracks and they'd go home, but they weren't so happy in that community about Saul Tomberg's conversion, as they called it, to Christianity. He was just excited about being a Messianic Jew and sharing Messiah. And so they organized and they picketed his stores and they said, Saul Tomberg is not a Jew. And they tried to, you know, to, to disparage him because he was a believing Jew. But when they would stop, they would have to take a break. And you know what they do, Sid? Go get some to eat. Absolutely. Go right inside and order some matzo ball soup. Let me have some latkes. Did it affect his business, all that nonsense? Not at all. Not, the Lord blessed his business. And you know what he did as well? He, he had his big old brown Chrysler. You remember the ones that were the size of like a cabin cruiser? Yeah. And he had some magnetic signs made. Normally, they would be on the side of a van and would say Joe's Refrigeration or something like that. But his said, Jesus is my Messiah, both sides of him. And he would drive it around town. And eventually, he drove it up to New Jersey, where my family and I live, my mom and dad, and my many siblings. And he came to us and he said, kids, gather around. You need to know Jesus is the Messiah. <laughs> and you know what? Many of us believed. At that time, I was 10 years old, and I... I gave my life to Jesus, the Messiah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, and I, I know why you call him your hero. Yes. Uh, but then there came a big difference maker in your life. Mm. His name in Hebrew, Ruach HaKodesh. Mm -hmm. In English, Holy Spirit. 
Tell me about that. Exactly. Well, I, had, you know, I was a believer at 10 years old, but around the time I was 13, I was praying. You were bar mitzvah. Now, exactly. <laughs> it was, I didn't have a Jewish bar mitzvah. I had a Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh bar mitzvah, praying with my friends at a youth group and for hours, really. And, and something happened to me. I was overcome with power and boldness and a, the presence of what I can only attribute to the Holy Spirit. I started speaking praying in the spirit, in a language I didn't understand. But beyond that, as I lived my life after that, I was able to preach with power, understanding the word of God. I never could understand it before, but now it was all making sense to me, and I can articulate it to my friends. Music, I was a music leader, a song leader. I became a worship leader, bringing spiritual uh, environments to situations through the, my playing of my guitar and being a psalmist. I got pretty good at guitar at that point. But you know what's hard for me to believe, Raphael, or even comprehend? What's that? Is at 16, after all those encounters, speaking in supernatural languages, feeling the mm. presence of God, mm. you began to drift away. Yeah, yeah. So what happened was I became a little full of myself. You know, I was a, one of the Jesus people of the late 70s, and I had the long hair and maybe the early 80s, and I looked a little bit like a rock star, very much a Christian, and I had gotten pretty good at guitar. I learned every song that came my way, including the Phil Keggy songs, which I love so much. And I started to be enticed by the things of the world, and they, the things of the world, were enticing me as well. In my high school, there were several groups that were forming secular rock bands. They wanted to play rock music. They wanted to get all the girls. They wanted to have all the attention. They wanted to have those parties. The problem was they didn't play guitar. <laughs> so they knew that there was a long-haired Christian guy named Raphael, and they, I got invited to be in several different rock bands. And normally, it's just music. But for them, it was music and partying and a whole lifestyle that us Christian kids wanted no part of. But, but they were enticing. And the idea of seeing and being part of that and being an honored guitar player uh, drew me into a lifestyle that I was not really intended to be. And I remember going to a rehearsal one time, dressed to the nines, had my fringe vest, my long hair, my guitar on my back, and I, I didn't have my driver's license. So I was walking along the side of the highway, going to this band practice slash secular party, and I was stopped in my tracks arrested, and I saw this vision flash before my eyes. And it was a vision of many people lavishing, languishing in darkness, being held by spiritual darkness, crying out, and then me being able to lift them out of this pit to a place of glory where Jesus was, where there was light and power and joy. And one after another, I was able to lift them out, and then the vision stopped. And then there was a voice. And it said, turn to me now, or you will lose all that I have for you. Mm. And I was stunned. And I, the vision, I couldn't get it out of my head. And I literally turned around <laughs> and walked back down the same shoulder of the road, and I went home, and I opened my Bible. And I just started reading and praying. And for a year, I opened my Bible. I read it cover to cover. I even red-lettered it, because it wasn't red-lettered. All the places where Jesus spoke. And, and I mem started memorizing scripture. My mom, my wonderful Jewish believing mom, had a, had a Bible study for older people in my living room on Thursday nights. I started attending that Bible study. And I started to grow in my faith. And then she said, why don't we have a Bible study for young people? So on Monday nights, I had a Bible study for young people. I was preaching to my friends, I was drawing them in, and that Bible study grew. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 people packed out my living room. We ended up having to go to the high school amphitheater where hundreds of people in my town were coming to faith and praising God, worshiping and evangelizing, and it was like nothing I've ever seen. And Amazing. Your grandfather must have been rooting for he you. He was. And I want to tell you, if you have an older person in your life, a Jewish grandfather, never stop praying. Don't give up. And if there is a Jewish person in your life, don't be afraid to share the good news of Messiah with them. They are longing for it. They were designed for it. Never be afraid. Never be reluctant to share your faith with a Jelish friend or family member. Raphael.
tell me the exact words that God said to you when you were fallen away from him. What did he say? Turn to me now, or you will forfeit, is actually the word, all that I have for you. Turn to me now, God is saying to you, or you will forfeit all that I have for you. You don't know when your end will come, but I do know right now you can have a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. I do know that if you will repeat this prayer with me to the best of your ability, no more, God doesn't expect something you're not capable of, mean it to the best of your ability. God will hear you, and has he have a good destiny for you? You've tried the destiny of the world. Now see what God has for you. Repeat this prayer out loud, out loud with me. Mean it to the best of your ability. Dear God, Dear God I've made many mistakes in my life, for which I'm so sorry. I believe you shed your blood to pay the penalty for my mistakes. And because of your sacrifice, I am clean. And now that I am clean, Jesus, come and live inside of me. I make you my Savior. I make you my Lord. Amen. Now, Raphael, I'm going to ask to teach how you can fulfill the vision he had at 16. What will it accomplish? No more fear, depression, or worry. Be right back. Prayer is an essential part to access every one of God's promises and blessings for your life. And praying daily in your God-given prayer language is so important in light of the times we are living. Introducing the brand new Sid Roth God Talk app. With this new prayer app, you will be able to set a reminder for when you want to pray. Let others know the time you spent in prayer each day for accountability. Take advantage of our worldwide prayer app community to lift your prayer requests to God. It includes a video teaching on how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how to effectively pray the supernatural language that God has given you on a daily basis. Watch our TV archives and ISN, our It's Supernatural Network, to build your faith to believe God for the impossible. The app is free and available for iPhone, iPad, or Android devices. Just go to your device's app store and search for Sid Roth's God Talk. We now return to It's Supernatural. Raphael, a lot of people don't realize this, but the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, was with us from the very beginning. Go back to the book of Genesis. Yeah, Genesis 1, obviously Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, Bereshit, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1.2 says this, the Ruach Elohim, the Spirit of God, hovered over the face of the deep, and then everything was created. The Ruach HaKodesh, the Ruach Elohim, the Spirit of God, was with us through the very beginning. That's why it's inherent of Jewish people to be, have an affinity to the Holy Spirit. And all through the Old Testament, the cloud of glory at Mount Sinai with Moses, the parting of the Red Sea, even the people that it was poured out on, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, did you know how Samson got his strength? Judges 13, the Holy Spirit came upon him. Saul, King Saul was worshiping in Gibeah, in Gibeah prophesying, 1 Samuel 10, the Holy Spirit was upon him. David, he was anointed in 1 Samuel 16, the Holy Spirit was upon him. The tabernacle filled with the Holy Spirit, the temple filled with the Holy Spirit. 
And it's amazing. The Holy Spirit was with us all the way through. Uh, Joel 2 says, though, you know, someday the Holy Spirit will be poured on all flesh. Sons and daughters will prophesy. And the Holy Spirit was poured out on Pentecost. But that same Holy Spirit on Pentecost, what does it say in Romans 8, 11? The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. It's the same Ruach HaKodesh. You are now fulfilling that prophetic word that God gave you of your destiny. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the, how you distinguish between spirit, soul, and body. Yeah, so everything is spiritual. But when I got that vision of pulling people out of darkness into a place of light, out of a place where they were languishing in, in darkness, trapped in darkness, to a place where they were experiencing the glory of Jesus in the light, it was spiritual. People are, are languishing in spiritual darkness. And here's the reason why. They don't understand that they have a human spirit. Do you know that you have a spirit? 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, May the God of peace sanctify you through and through. May your spirit, soul, and body be held blameless before the Lord at the day of Jesus Christ. In other words, your spirit, soul, and body are the three parts of us. We're created in His image, right? The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we are three parts. But people don't understand what the spirit and soul is. You know what your body is, right? Right. But your spirit and soul, they're immaterial. So sometimes people don't fully understand. I believe the Word of God helps us do that. As we study the Word, as we learn the Word, as we use the living and active Word, Hebrews 4.12, the Word of God is living and active and able to pierce, dividing the soul from the spirit. So what is the soul? What is the spirit? Well, the soul basically is your mind and emotions. Everyone has one. Your unsaved friends have one. Your dog probably has a mind and emotions, but it doesn't have a spirit. In fact, most people don't have their spirit made alive. It's like three balloons, right? One is body, one is soul, and one is spirit, but that one's deflated until the Ruach HaKodesh, the breath of God, that's what it means, blows it up, fills it up, and now it's made alive. In Ephesians, when we say, and it says we're made alive, well, what was dead? And yeah, the Ephesians weren't dead. They had bodies, they had souls, but their spirits were dead. You know, their spirits were dead. Why? Because from the very beginning, when man fell, when, when Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit, God told them, the day you eat of that fruit, you will surely die. What died? Their bodies didn't die. Their souls didn't die. Their spirits died. Hmm. And they were doomed forever. In fact, mankind was doomed forever. The only way out of that predicament is if someone could be born that, whose spirit wasn't dead. And that would require their father not being human. One was born that way, Jesus. His father was the Holy Spirit. And so when he came into the world, his spirit was alive. That's how he's able to give life to each one of our spirits. When we receive him into us, we have our body, we have our soul, and, but our spirit is made alive. And back to your question, why do people operate in fear and anxiety and, and, and worry? Even since the pandemic, you know, people, with their, their health, their finances, their relationships, the political climate, you know, the world, the carnality and immorality. And I have friends and wonderful believing friends, but they're worried, Sid. They're filled with anxiety. You know why? Why? They're operating in their soul and not their spirit. And they don't realize. They don't realize it. It's supernatural. 1 Corinthians 2 says this, the natural man can't perceive the things of the Spirit because they're foolishness to him because they're only discerned through the Spirit. So if you are walking around as a natural man, that means you're just using your soul, mind, and emotions, what you think, what you feel. But when you operate and walk in and move in the Spirit of God, you have love and peace and joy and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and meekness, self-control and the power of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's a lot better than just your mind and emotions. <laughs> you teach a lot about being governed by the Spirit. Yeah. Give us a practical yeah. insight. So when we are governed by the Spirit, we're allowing Him to control us. And it's basically a surrender of your will. Even Jesus said, not my will be done, but your will be done. And when we submit to His will, that means we allow His Holy Spirit to direct us, to, to lead us. 
of Galatians 5 tells us the flesh and spirit are always in conflict with each other. It's like a tug of war. Our flesh, which by the way is part of our soul, it's our sinful nature, it's the part that wants to satiate the cravings of our body. You know, hunger and food, lust and pride and all those things. And the flesh is always trying to make way for that. But the spirit is saying, "Uh uh-uh. I want you to please God, to love others, to spread the word, to move in spiritual dimensions. And so it's a tug of war all the time. But when you let the, as Romans 8, 6, when the, when the mind, and when the mind is governed by the spirit, it results in life and peace. And those are powerful words. It's eternal life and the peace that passes understanding. We don't have enough time, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. for you to teach on this, but you've made it a lifetime study. What difference is it going to make when people really distinguish and choose to follow the Spirit? Yeah, you know, I wrote it in my book because it all came to me as as a revelation, and I realized I needed to write it down. So I wrote a book called, you know, it's, it's made available. It's Soul or the Spirit. Knowing the difference can change your life. Soul mind and emotions, what you think, what you feel. And sadly, many believing people are operating that way. They think they're really smart, so they operate that way. They think they're really visceral and sensitive, so they operate that way. But they're not operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. So they, they lean on the resources of their soul. Problem is, it's a spiritual warfare. We are in spiritual warfare every day. Your soul's not, not going to cut it. We need to put on the full armor of God. Ephesians 6. Well, well, you know, everyone understands the need to eat physical food every day, but you don't understand the need to feed your spirit mm-hmm. every day. You, you, well, I've read the Bible for 20 years, 40 years. You've eaten for 20 or 40 <laughs> years. You're going to stop eating physical food? Give me a break. <laughs> I want you to pray for those viewers what mm. God's, from the Spirit, what yeah. God's showing you for them. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to pray. And I want to address you as I pray. Because I believe that you are operating in a way that you will be defeated if you, unless you rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to pray that the full armor of God clothes you in a spiritual way, that you will have the helmet of salvation, that you are saved by the grace of God through faith, but you have the breastplate of righteousness guarding you from the spiritual darts of the enemy, righteousness imputed to you that you'll hold firm to the belt of truth and that you will walk in the truth of the Word of God, that your feet would be shod with the preparation of the gospel, meaning you'll share the good news, that you'll hold fast the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and the shield of faith, which is trusting in God. But it doesn't stop there. Ephesians 6, the very next verse says this, don't just stand there with the armor on, pray in the Spirit. Pray continually in the Spirit. Friend, if you would pray in the Spirit, as the Spirit moves you and gives you utterance, pray beyond your vocabulary and that you will do warfare with the things that are coming against you and you will be victorious. That's my prayer for you. Victory in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, through the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. And let me remind you, Paul said, I pray without ceasing. The only way he could have prayed without ceasing is to pray in the Spirit. And then he further said, I pray in supernatural languages, tongues, more than anyone. I want you to start saying that. Be in the Spirit, and you will not go through what the world's going through right now. Make a quality decision. Life can seem to glide by in a monotonous rhythm of daily activities. You wake, you shower, you dress, you take care of others and make sure they have all they need, you commute to work, you work hard for eight hours, maybe nine, maybe ten, you commute back home, you cook dinner, you watch some television, you go to bed. It's the same predictable cycle, day after day, month after month, year after year. 
you wonder, is this all there is to life? The truth is that change is available. There is a greater purpose for your life, something only you can do. There's a plan, a guiding map that has been there since before you were even born. There's a path that was created for you, which you alone can take. Day by day, hour by hour, if you choose to pursue it, your destiny will be revealed. The invitation is there. Will you discover all that life has for you? Do you want to find out what you were truly created for? Do you want more? Are you hungry to discover your purpose? We would love to provide you with a powerful book that will show you the way. Get a free online download of the book, They Thought for Themselves, by logging onto the website, theythoughtforthemselves.com. The constant worry of illness can be crushing. Not knowing what is going to happen, the stress of medical bills, and the discouragement of being unable to do the things you love can be depressing. Healing and faith are mysteries for most people. Sid Roth's ebook contains his personal list of healing scriptures. As you meditate on these promises, you tap into a supernatural portal called the Kingdom of Heaven. Faith and healing will no longer be a mystery. Download your free copy of the Healing Scriptures book at sidroth.org slash healing. Your gifts to this ministry will help Sid air It's Supernatural in Israel 28 times a week and distribute his evangelistic book to the Jewish people worldwide. 